you have a minute or two or 20 i will tell you a story everybody's god spoke a language and has set up a religion and the people of each religion are supposed to talk to you to their god in the god's language else the god does not respond i have met some people who spoke a few languages i think people have one up on the gods notwithstanding now i don't know what notwithstanding means and i don't know what god means so that's all right now as for divine god is a divine being and the stories that are written by people about the gods are supposed to be divine inspired well the gods did not write so people will write these stories a god tell them or something like that how to live what to do what not to do when to do it <laughs> notwithstanding i don't know what notwithstanding mean and i don't know what divine mean everything rests on the language exact words and right pronunciation or else the god does not respond but that is except the people who speak in tongues <laughs> that is supposed to be divine inspired also but as long as i don't know what divine means it's good i think if prayers work there will be less praying so now they are talking about things for praying when you are dead you'll get it or in the next life well i don't know how anybody worked that out now here's a story about language yeah an fbi an fbi supervisor he's angry with a, an agent so he said i will send you to mexico the agent says i don't want to go to mexico i don't even speak spanish the supervisor said said well learn it how difficult can it be mexicans speak it <laughs> now here's another one the pres the first president of algeria after they got independence right they had a president he went to england when he came back all the reporters gathered around well well where is england what is there what did you see he talked about the big ben and the double decker bus and everything else and then said the reporter asked what impressed you the most and he said to see little children speak in english Now, here's another story. The first English explorers or sailors, something like that, went to Japan and they came back and they had to report to the king and the queen. So the sailors said, the explorers said, Your, um, what do you call them? Your royalty, something like that. You should see this place, Japan. All the streets are paved, people are wearing clean, bright colored clothes. And the houses are brightly painted and they don't even speak english <laughs> how did they work that out now now in the line of language an english author went to france and she learned french there and after a while started writing in french things like that so she was interviewed and she said to the interviewer when she is speaking she prefers to speak english but when she is writing she prefers to write french a second english author went to france learned french and while she was there she wrote a book in english and nobody in the english world want to publish it they all said oh it's not good she translated that book into french and it sold well 
Then she translate that French book into English. And then it sold well in the English world. Now closer to the subject. Rosalind, she speaks French and English. Her first language is French. So when we meet, we are talking religion, philosophy, psychology, science, subatomic parts, particles, multiverse or universe. I mean, we have different opinions or ideas, not ideas, opinions. On it. What does she know about it? What do I know about it, right? But we pick up bits and pieces, and as far as we could understand, we make it up, right? So we have different sort of opinion on subjects. And she's speaking, I'm speaking like that. But when she slips into French, I know this conversation is over. She is not, she's speaking from what she really feel, believe, accept. She's speaking from a structure. That's why it comes out in French. In English, she could manufacture anything and put anything together. Now you see, our language is established and developed with the emotion. And what we call speech is the outward expression of that emotion. Everything that lives has a mode of communication. And they, and they learn the communication of other creatures in order to co collaborate, to eat others, kill others, escape from others, for their survival, we'll call it that, right? Now, in humans, the most popular expression of language is speech. If the source of that expression is called God, if it is called mind, if it is summoned by ambition, we cannot trust the speech. In the parlor, we are ex expressing ourselves for ourselves. As a group, huh? we learn the common language of mind in thoughts and in dreams. Do we really have to know or understand ourselves but we should be always with ourselves you know we don't need to tell us hey guess what we did do we have to make our mind do something or refrain from something do we have to learn attitudes and attributes in order to be successful how hard did we have to try to fail <laughs> work that out now the subject at hand. In my last dream, I am driving a car. I turn right at an intersection. And right at the intersection, head on collision with a police car. Now the first question is, how can you have a head on collision at an intersection? I'm in my lane, right? So I guess he's in, out of his lane or I'm in the wrong lane, something like that. But at the impact, I just reverse. There was probably a parking lot right there. I go into the parking lot. I just um, open the door, put my legs out, still sitting, I'm looking up. And there's a line of police just looking at me. And I'm watching them. And I wake with that. So, did I say I make it up, right? This, so I think it like this. This means something like my God has presented divine speech for me to see. I could say it means go straight. I could say it means don't change direction. Or the God is keeping watch over me. Or maybe I should just stop for a while and wait. I am waiting for something. Did I mention I make it up? I am Aten, Raj, Indra, Nath, interpreter. 